Okay, hi. A very good evening to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm Vijayaraj, uh, one of the executive committee members from ISOC, ISOC, which stands for Integrated Sustainability and Urban Creativity Center of the Asia Pacific University. Uh, today, we have a very special topic uh, entitled Agenda 2030 uh, Gamification for a Better Planet. Uh, this is part of our visiting school series. Uh, in fact, this lecture today is lecture number eight, and it is the last one for 2022. Um, so the topics we'll be covering uh, is associated to 2030 agenda. And the heart of uh, 2030 agenda, actually, we can consider it covering about five domains or five dimensions, if you like, which includes people, uh, prosperity, planet, partnership, and peace. Uh, these are also known as the five Ps, actually. Uh, and one of the goals from what I have understood from Agenda 2030 are actually securing a world of free poverty and hunger with full and productive, uh, productive employment, access to equal education and universal health coverage with achievement of gender equality and of course, an uh, end to environmental degradation. This is what basically the main goals are. And uh, members who have formulated this, uh, part of the agenda 2030 is of course, member countries from the United Nations, and they have established 17 uh, sustainability goals, SDG as they call it. Uh, it was formulated in 2015, and the target is 2030 to achieve at least most of them, if not all. Uh, so, coupled with this Agenda 2030 uh, in today's topic, we have this concept of uh, gamification. And basically, as most of you would know, probably gamification is a technique that designers use to insert gameplay elements in non-gaming strategies so that it enhances 
uh, user engagement with a product or a service. Now, leading, uh, giving this particular intro, uh, a person who will definitely throw a very interesting uh, light onto this topic today. I would like to introduce him now uh, uh, before we go into the detailed lecture. Uh, he is Mr. Siva Shankar. He's the founder and managing director of First Ray Private Limited. Uh, just to give you a background, uh, Mr. Siva Shankar Krishna Pillay is actually a chemical engineer by profession, a corporate trainer, motivational speaker, and a gamification consultant. Uh, he has 35 years of experience working in corporate sector uh, in I also formulation of IT solution for organization, empowering, uh, and also stakeholder engagement. He has held various management positions in the United States, in the United Kingdom, and in Malaysia as well. And currently, presently, he runs his own business, delivering IT-based solutions in the new norm, and also providing training both live and virtually as well. Uh, interestingly enough, he's a self-coder, self-taught coder, where he learned programming on his own, and he has developed solutions, including Android applications, Raspberry Pi application, and programmable drones as well. Uh, he's also an advisor of the Global Youth Forum based in Kenya. Uh, Shiva, as we call him, or Shiv, as we used to call him, is passionate about helping people succeed in both workplace and personal settings. And he's, he excels in simplifying delivery of content in a way understandable by audience. Okay. Um, so in uh, to introduce him further, I would like to call him further to the stage now. And Shiva, I hand over to you uh, with your topic. I'm sure you are very passionate about this topic, which is Agenda 2030, Gamification for a Better Planet. Over to you, Shiv. Thank you. Thank you, Raj. Hello, everyone. Appreciate APU having me here. And uh, so the lecture on Agenda 2030, Gamification for a Better Planet. So without further ado, let me just uh, and share my screen is up uh, as well. And uh, we can I'll share screen for the. OK. As soon as I have my screens up, I'll begin. Huh? Thank you again, Raj, for the uh, wonderful uh, introduction. Just got to see that I'm. OK, so here we go. The slides are up, I hope. Agenda 2030, gamification for a better planet. So that's the topic. And uh, so we actually have two items here, Agenda 2030 and gamification. Huh? And both are close to my heart. And that's why the topic today, um, essentially, this online lecture shall cover the following. So you have an idea what I'm going to do. The essential principles of gamification. Uh, Mr. Raj uh, gave some introduction on that. Uh, then what is Agenda 2030? Many of you may already be aware of it, of it. Some of you are not. Then this is the time, I guess, to learn a little bit more. Then we will speak about the 17 sustainable development goals and some of the targets. I will not cover every uh, goal, but we will just see how we can look at it. Then this is, I guess, the more important aspect of it. A look at some of the concern areas, some of the concern areas, what planet Earth is facing and how Agenda 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goals will address them. And then I'll speak about giants versus titans. Now, this is uh, some of the uh, uh, gamified solutions we have actually done in the past, how we got people um, to enthuse about wanting to bring about change through games. Huh? and specifically about <clears throat> environment-related uh, items, uh, sustainability-related. And finally, a look ahead to 2030 and beyond. So this is where we will uh, talk about what's coming up, will we meet targets, and whatnot. And finally, if we do have uh, enough people, we will try and do this uh, uh, online quiz as well, where all of you can uh, kind of take up your keypads and, and, and answer questions. Uh. For that, have a second device ready, so that uh, I, I guess in about Six minutes, seven minutes, you will have the first quiz. 
Okay, so now getting into the subject matter itself, gamification. What do we mean about gamification? You can see the um, a definition there, the use of game design elements in non-game context. Um, I'm sure many of you have played games before, like you know those days we would play uh, rounders and hide and seek. It was just about, hey, let's have a game, and it was about having fun and uh, challenge and whatnot, and then we go back and, and we study. Yeah? So there was no non-game context. Huh? Although if you look at it deeply, you can actually find some non-game context like like team building, like the friendship that you build. But those days it was just about having a game. Huh? Uh, but some of the non-game context we speak about here, what do they include? The first that comes to mind is organizational culture change, team building. Okay, previously when in any company, you know, things are not going well, the boss will call, let's have a meeting. Why is this not going right? Why is that not going right? They will all share ideas and then they will take notes and decide, okay, this is what we have to change and everybody do this, everybody do that. And it doesn't necessarily work best. So that happens in companies. Huh? Another context, achieving sales targets, huh? achieving corporate targets. For example, like zero accidents. Huh? People do not want to, um, the, the bosses have certain targets they, they have in their departments. So these are targets. Huh? Then you look at education as well. A lot of parents uh, send their children for tuition. And this is where, you know, it's study, study, study. But are the children actually motivated to study? Sure, they might, you know, achieve the end target of scoring an A or a B, but is it exactly how they can carry it forward in the future? We don't know. So, but this is where gamification has uh, benefits. And finally, community agendas as well. We live in neighborhoods. Uh, we live in a country. And this is where working together, we can actually achieve targets in community agendas. And this is where I guess we're talking about for a better planet, the community agenda. In fact, to go further, Gartner defines the use of uh, gamification as the use of game mechanics and experience design to digitally engage and motivate people to achieve their goals. I've got some uh, key elements there in italics. Game mechanics, I'll speak about it in, in a bit. Experience design is important because this is where people would actually be engaged in the game and decide not to fall in or fall out, you know? And generally now they say gamification includes digitally. Some people may disagree because, you know, you can get a group of people and actually have them all um, sit around in a training room and, and do games. And it might be gamification as well. Huh? And finally, the word that motivate people to achieve their goals. So I guess, that is the, the most important part of uh, gamification. You design the game to get people motivated, motivated enough to want to achieve these goals. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> Some of the game mechanics I mentioned, or the game elements. Huh? So these are things a lot of um, uh, game designers use. Points, how many points do you have? Leaderboards, you know, you, you tell somebody I have 15 points, it means nothing until they compare it on a leaderboard with somebody else. Huh? Progress bars, okay, that's indicative of how well you're doing compared to what you expected to do. Ranks, badges, and rewards. So these are things like, okay, there are, you got a score of 98, well done, but hold on, you rank 27th out of 50, you know? So the rank is important because the 98 means nothing. Maybe there are many people on 98, 90.5, 99, and so Badges, badges give you recognition, okay? So when they go sit down at the cafeteria, I achieve my blue badge today, you can talk about it. Rewards, I think, uh, goes without saying. End of the year party or, or you, you get a reward a, a check. Okay, so all these are game elements. Okay, these are important as well, things like storyboard. Storyboard is, you know, when you design it, you have in mind, okay, we're going to start in a dark cave and then they've got to look for the exit point when they come out, what happens? Animals will attack them, etc. Suspense. Okay, you have to, you know, just kind of build in suspense. Some of the games I do, sometimes I go and then I'll pause before I tell the score or I just cut out the score and we'll come the next round in suspense. Huh? Strategy is important. In fact, later we shall try and play one of these games. Strategy is what actually is, uh, makes a game really interesting. And when you have them 
uh, in teams, you know, it comes more interesting. Surprise is, uh, is a very important element because that's what makes your game actually different from others, where you can throw in something and it's a surprise to everybody. Yeah? And finally, collaboration and competition. So your game can be actually the entire team is one team, and when they play, they're playing to achieve one target commonly. Yeah? Or they compete with each other. You can have three teams, they're all competing with each other, or every individual is competing. Yeah? So this is how they can look at it. So great game designers use these elements to craft the player's journey to meet the gamification agendas most effectively. So there you go. You got to use these elements, and you, you're, you're player, you're creating games. You got to craft the journey of the player so that they are always on board. They're enjoying it, and they're also kind of being pushed and encouraged towards the goals that the management wants or whatnot. And uh, of course, it helps to have knowledge of the players. You need to know who your players are, what are their values, what are their emotional drives. Huh? Do they like recognition or are they more like achievement based where it's not important to be recognized by society, but I just want to do it for myself. So, you know, you, you would then make sure that you don't have too many badges and whatnot, but progress bars. And, and then there's skills as well. You don't want to do a game where, uh, you know, it's too difficult for everybody or too easy as well. People get turned off. And OK, uh, the, the writer, Gamifier, if they have you know, NLP knowledge, then you use all these different modalities, sensory modality, visual, audio, kinesthetics, uh, olfactory, and, uh, and gastology. OK, so these are different things uh, that you, you can use and actually make sure that they touch, feel what, not, what they hear, what they see on the screen. So you use these things as well to make your game better. OK, the phases of a game, the four phases there that I mentioned, discovery, onboarding, scaffolding, and end game. Now, discovery is when people are first hearing about the game. How do you discover the game? A friend tells you about it. Or you see it on an advertisement on, on your local channel, a TV channel. Or you see it on Instagram. And then you get onto the game. Many people think, oh, it doesn't matter. Whichever way, let them start my game, you know? But uh, this may be important because some people, if they hear it on a particular channel, they really like it. If they hear it from a friend or their son, or the son hears it from the father, they're not interested. But they hear it from their friends, they're interested. Okay, that's the discovery phase. So even as a, a game creator, you've got to make sure you put it through the right channels to make people aware of your game. Right? Then we have onboarding. Huh? Onboarding, and now this phase ends. So once the discovery phase ends, the onboarding starts. Now uh, the player starts to learn, OK, what are the skills necessary to play the game? They'll touch, they'll feel. So they will know, OK, I press this button, I, I get here. OK, I, or this particular card gives me this skills or this ability. You know? So this is where they're learning everything. Huh? And this phase will end when the player has all the skills necessary to start playing the game. Okay, so if you imagine getting to know the rules, getting to know the equipment and, and whatnot, getting to know the overall storyboard and what they're supposed to do. So now scaffolding. So once the, the onboarding uh, finishes, scaffolding. Now this is the part where actually a lot of the game is actually going on. You know, scaffolding is like you're getting from this to that. And you play and play and play until you get all your objectives. Huh? You get better at it. You meet the game's objectives and needs. Huh? So once you are competent, or once the player feels, right now I've done everything, that's when they're ready for the end game. So uh, scaffolding is where most of the game design is built in. But the end game is really, really important too. Because if you don't end it right, or you don't end it early enough at times, you know people will be playing, playing, and they'll get fed up as well. So at some point, the end game needs to come in. And you've got to have a good ending as well. Huh? So when I do quizzes with scoreboards, etc., you know, when do I introduce my scoreboard? Or when do I introduce another surprise to keep them engaged? So the end game, if you don't design it well, they might have completed everything, but they may not come back and play version two, version three. So this is where the end game as well. So this is from Yuka, uh, the, the website is where I got it. Four phases of the game. Now remember, 
every game designer aims to use game elements to basically, as we said, motivate. But if you look at it in the East, you want to entice them. You want to engage them. You want to encourage them. And finally, you want to empower them. Huh? So coming back to school and tuition, huh? uh, you got to engage them in some way, but are you enticing them? Are you forcing them? You know, uh, Are you pushing them? And end of the day, they may be able to get great A's, everything on paper, but are they empowered when they go out to the workplace? Do they have the, you know, the communication skills and whatnot? So every game uh, designer needs to really take into account, like I said, all these factors before, the player, their skill level, and design it so that you meet it accordingly. So here we go, some ex examples of gamification that we did. And this was a, a program called uh, Mighty Minds. It was for schools and education. Huh? So it was basically um, the client wanted to help improve the standard of English uh, in Malaysian school students. So for seven years in a row, we went to every capital and we engaged with students in shopping malls and whatnot. And we had quizzes, questions and answers in English. Then they have to build models, speak about uh, their models, and finally a buzzer quiz as well. So this is gamifying education. This is gamification in a private college year. So you have 15-year-olds, you know, 18-year-olds, you have 20-year-olds as well. And you can see how they're engaged. If you just look at the picture here, how this girl is going ooh and ah. And at the back, they're all celebrating, okay? It's a team celebration. So you actually, with this then, let's play a game, okay? Now, this is where I want all of you, if you're watching, let's see, I don't know how many we have. Uh, take out your second uh, device, take out a browser, um, and um, or if you might have a second screen as well uh, on your laptop, open up uh, a link, and then you log in into this, link that I'll show you shortly, okay? So if you're ready for that, everyone, let me see how many we can get, and accordingly, uh, we will just start, okay? First things first, let me just, so get your keypads out ready, and let me clear the scores. I'm also going to, just a minute, uh, make sure all participants from previous games have been cleared, Okay, with that then, look up your screen now and uh, just confirm that. And do you see the location to log into? Okay, so there we go. Get into www.keypad.my. So you will now get a keypad. And now what I'm trying to do is actually onboard you. I'm going to onboard you to try and play this game. Now, onboarding is not easy. It'll take some time learning it. But uh, if you've got your keypad, you can get onto this keypad.my. We'll have a few questions, and then we'll see you know, how you get in. So good. We've got one login. Let's try and see how many logins. We've got two logins. As soon as you're logged in, I will start the challenge, OK? Once again, remember gamification and the, the um, four phases. Huh? We are now at the onboarding phase. I'll give you another 15 seconds, get you all logged in. Seven logins, thank you, huh? keypad.my. And shortly, I'll show you. So if you put in a nickname, your nickname should come out. And um, OK, final 15 seconds for you all to log in. Huh? Once again, if you've joined us, thank you for being here. We're talking about 2030 gamification for a better planet. 10 logins here. And in fact, let's see whether we can displace that. In fact, 12 logins. Uh, Joy, you're in. Maya, is very. Okay, if you're in, go on and press a button. Press A, B, C, or D on your keypad. Huh? You'll see about a, you've got even multiple responses. Go on and press. You just touch it once, it'll say submitted. Well done. Ilk has pressed D. Anyone else? Joy has pressed A. Anyone else logging in? So I want all of you to just get on board. You see double letters there is because you're allowed to play for multiple responses, but you get less points, huh? Okay, one final look at your keypad uh, QR code, and then we will begin in 30 seconds. Anyone else getting in? No? Okay. Once again, once you're logged in, keep this keypad because we're going to have a scoreboard at the end. Gamifying and... Uh, 
Okay, with that, here we go now. So let me then come to the rules, okay? It's an onboarding and uh, look at the screen and this is what's going to happen. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question. Now, this is not the actual question, so don't press your keypads yet. There's only one character, and you can score points according to how you respond. Huh? There's only one correct answer. Now, if you select one of these buttons, A, B, C, or D, and it is correct, you get full points, 15 points. But if you're wrong, you end up with zero points. Now, this is where, like I said, strategy has spoken about gamification, so we built in these possibility, the options. You can go for two choices, and if one of them is right, you get eight points. So this would be good if you think it's a tough question. Better to get eight points than zero points, right? So it's all about strategy. I won't be having double up. And finally, if you want to pass, you get four points. And for that, don't press in your response ultimately, okay? There we go. The 15-8-4 scoring system. Once again, this is something we've created. And let's see whether you guys have fun using it. Remember, strategy, you're trying to beat the others here. Sometimes play eight points, it's better. Sometimes you're not sure, go for four points. Don't press a button. With that then, okay, all decisions are final. I need to make this uh, as always. Okay, good luck. I will scoreboard, set to zero. And here we go. Here comes question number one. If you were listening in as well, right. We talk about Agenda 2030. The first question, what day is recognized as Earth Day in most parts of the world? I will begin your 15-second count now and send in your responses. I have two responses already, I can see. Six responses. I think we have 10 or 12 of you. Seven responses. And time's up, zero seconds. We'll close the, okay. Let's see what you guys have responded. 13 responses here. And now 1584, I'm sure. Oh, look at that. Some of you have gone for February 31st. That date doesn't exist, right? Either the September 31st. So those of you who went for A and D, you're probably going to get it. And those of you who went for A and C, you're probably not the correct answer. Let's see the correct answer. And now reveal the correct answer is actually April 22nd. Uh, so 38% of you are getting it right, and some of you may have gotten for eight points. With that, let's move on to question number two. But before that, again, it's a day to remember and demonstrate our support for environmental protection. Huh? It was first held in 1970. Was that what, 52 years ago? Yeah. Okay, if we move on to question number two. And question number two is as follows. Look, let's move on a little faster. What is the instrument shown here? Okay, look at this instrument. Is it one of the following? And is it A, the flute, B, the trombone, C, the guitar, or D, the clarinet? Five questions, I'm going to vary it. And I've got a question on gamification as well, I believe. Let's begin the countdown clock. Put in your responses. We have 11 responses. One more look at the picture. Okay. And there's a lag on, on Facebook Live, so I will just give a couple of extra seconds. Okay, 13 responses again. And trombone and clarinet look to be it. 13. Well done. No one has gone for the flute or the guitar, the 1584. And the answer we're looking for here is the trombone. Okay, so 69%, well done. I'll have two more questions, maybe even three. Let's let's do all three, eh? in the interest of time. I think uh, we have time. Your next question, are we ready? And the question is as follows. Gamification aims to achieve non-game agendas by doing something to players, with players, how we call it. Remember, give me the answer that I want. The most important of these choices is it A, by educating players? Is it B, by bribing players? 
C, motivating players? Or is it D, by praising players? Okay, and I start the countdown. I have six responses already. Send in your responses, folks. Agenda 2030, gamification. This is question number three. I have five questions for you. Since it's gamification, let's have a game on this lecture. Okay, and time's up. All responses in. 13 responses in. Nobody's passing and going for four points. Okay, it's interesting. Educating has got 46% and motivating has got 35%. As I said, give me the answer that I'm looking for. The answer is indeed motivating. Why did I go with motivating? You know, we want to educate people, but you don't have to use games for that. When you use games, you actually want to motivate them towards the goal. So the answer that I have is uh, the key value and objective of any game designer is to motivate the players to the agenda, the client's agenda, okay? So I'm going to speak later about Agenda 2030 and raising awareness of that. So that is our agenda to make this a better planet. Final two questions, and here is question number four. I believe I got a picture to show you as well. Okay, right. Now this is interesting, huh? Carbon dioxide consumption emissions per person. Now Americans emit about 17.5 tons carbon dioxide per person every year. What about for Malaysians? Okay, there we go. You see Americans about 17 tons, China about eight, UK there. You can see India is much less, Nigeria is even less. So what about Malaysians? How are we compared to Americans? What do you think, more or less? And your countdown starts now. Okay, six responses. I'll give you a bit more time. Okay. And let's see what you all have responded. Majority have gone for 45 percent. I'll just uh, and is that the correct answer? 45 percent have gone for 8.7 carbon tons. That's right. Malaysians are better than Americans in terms of our emissions and our consumption, but uh, in, in a sense we are like closer to China. Um, and uh, this is actually something that we we should do better. In fact, later I will speak about. Um, uh, carbon dioxide emissions and our consumption. Final question before we go back to our lecture. The world population today is closest to how many people? Okay, 7.94 million, 9.94 million, 7.94 billion, or 9.94 billion people. This is important as we speak about making this a better planet, we should have an understanding and knowledge of where we are at, okay? And your time starts now. Three responses in. Six responses in. Final question before I go back. Okay. 11 responses and time's up. And right, let's see what the majority have gone for. 91% going for 7.94 billion. And uh, coincidentally, actually, some uh, in note, they call it 15th of November is the 8 billion people day. But this latest side, I said, is we've not quite gotten there. So, but within the next two weeks, we will hit 8 billion, I believe. The correct answer is not millions, it's actually 7.94 billion. Thank you. 91% of you getting it right. 11 responses, 10 of you getting correct. And the final, okay, let's look at our scoreboard then. This is coming up, your scoreboard. How many of you played and let's see our scores. There we go, Eastbury there on 15 points, six points, LKY, Maya on 38 points. And let's see our top 12. There we go, top 12, JR. Okay. Fifth place, Jasper. Fifth place, 
Okay, and coming to our top five, in fifth place as well on the tie, we have... Okay, we got game two coming up, so I will respond and show you who is in first place. Don't go anywhere. Keep your keypad active at the place, and let's go on to the lecture. So, coming back to the lecture. Thank you for taking part. I appreciate your joining us. So now we come and we speak about Agenda 2030. Now that we have covered gamification, what is Agenda 2030? So it was something, it was uh, an agreement that was signed in September 2015. Huh? All our leaders, 25 nations, 193 nations, they all got together after you know, three or four years of pre preparing for it. In fact, it was ongoing with the United Nations. They all met in New York and signed I just spoke to the Malaysian uh, uh, people in charge and who went, was it the Minister of Environment? They said, no, actually our Prime Minister at that time, he went and signed the agreement. So Malaysia is very much on board with this. And the bottom line is, they all agree that they can change the world for the better. You know, And what how, we will do this by bringing together all parties. Huh? So it's the all stakeholders we brought in, huh? governments of countries, the businesses, the media, we have institutions of higher education, so we are in the university and whatnot, yeah? and then local schools and individual companies as well, all can be involved in this. And in fact, that's one reason I'm, I'm involved in Agenda 2030, because I want to change, and I know that if I have ideas, it'll be well received by our government or people in the United Nations. And now, thanks to the, the internet, you know, you can actually uh, look up and work with people throughout the globe. Huh? And so what they did was they came up with the agreement and they put 17 goals. And because it's related to sustainability, it was called the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And they had individual and national, uh, uh, they had timelines, but the way it was done is some nations were allowed to you know, vary their timelines accordingly as well. This is plus minus. Huh? And uh, they had 169 targets that were specified to ensure commitment to this. So it's just not about, you know, you, you sign this and you walk away. Uh, 2030, there's a roadmap, there's a timeline, there's milestones, and 169 targets were specified to ensure this commitment. We will try and look at some of these targets, goals and targets, huh? And we have LNOB. What's LNOB? If you think you know, you just type it in on, on the chat box, LNOB. I see some of you have actually signed A, B, C, D. You're typing in answers there, but LNOB. LNOB is, now this is the central transform transformative promise of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its Sustainable Goals. So leave no one behind. So I, I like it because at the end of the day, we are all one planet, we are all one people, and it's about put everybody up together. So LNOB is, is the key of that, uh, you know? So you can see it enshrines universal respect. We envisage a world of universal respect for human rights and human dignity, the rule of law, justice, equality. Yeah? End of the day, we want a just, equitable, tolerant, open, and socially inclusive world in which the needs of the most vulnerable are met. Okay, so that is basically the uh, 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Now, I put this up, it is from one of the United Nations. If you look at this picture here, and leaving no behind, no one behind, uh, you know, my heart goes out. If you look at this young man, uh, he's got a, a young man, uh, 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 okay, perhaps in, uh, six or seven years old, and he's using his pencil and is repeating, writing something, huh? Education, education is so important. He's got some, you know, something on his face, uh, maybe for to help him in some way. But the bottom line is, it's so, you know, nice to see that he's been taken care of. So that's what's important. We don't want to leave anyone behind. We educate them and make sure that they're empowered enough to contribute to a better planet. Huh? So there we go then, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of Agenda 2030 on your screen. Huh? So I don't know how many of you have heard about it. Agenda number one, no poverty, 
you have zero hunger, you have good health and well-being. Huh? I, I will go through some of these uh, in a bit. Um, in fact, I think you can actually have a whole new uh, difference for it. Type in, uh, into the chat box what you think is your favorite uh, sustainable development goal or which goal can you relate to. Now, remember, you are doing work in a particular area. So one of these or even more than one of these goals will relate to you. So if you're aware of, of Agenda 2030 and you get involved in the SDGs, you will then be able to network with people and actually improve yourself. Either you improve your business, improve your, your, your inner spiritually or your inner happiness, more positive person, huh? because just by being involved in this. Huh? So you can see, one, we want everyone to, to uh, live a better life. If I just click here, let me see whether I can uh, get onto uh, a website, which kind of, yes, there we go, all these sustainable development goals. So you can see there is a whole lot of information all over. So all the goals, the 17 goals, uh, 109 targets built with them. And you can see here, no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education. So we go to these sdgs.un.goals. You can see some of them. Right. With that, I'm just looking at the clock as well and how much time I have. So all these, if you look at it, life below water, life on land and whatnot. Hi, hi everyone. Um, we suddenly lost our guest speaker, uh, Shiva. I'm sure he's trying to get back in. Uh, just give us a moment. We will try to contact him again uh, to come on board again. Just hold on, please. We are trying to contact him. Hopefully, we can get him on board again. Yes, I think he's he's attempting to log in into our system again. Um, he should be in any time. Just hold on, please. Is it our internet? I cannot be. Simba, send me a message that is. Logging in again. <clears throat> yeah, could be some connectivity issue from uh, the speaker side, possibly, but he's trying to get in again, guys. <clears throat> Okay, Shiva, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Yes, I think suddenly the line dropped for some reason. Yes. Okay, you may, you may want to continue, please. Okay, let me just get share my screen. So this is where uh, we talk about sustainable development goal nine, huh? infrastructure. Okay, got it. Let me just share my screen. And, uh, 
Right, if you can just put me back up on my screen. Let me see whether. Okay, it looks like I'm back. So there we go. I, I spoke then about the wedding cake model, the importance of having a good biosphere. So these are the things. Only if we have this and we are stable here, then we can go on to society. Yeah? Um, this is where things like no poverty, um, you know, uh, things like gender equality and all are important. And finally, the top layer, to have a good economy and to have work and, and all that are responsible, you need to have the other two layers. So they have a wedding cake model, and that's where it's important that we make sure we get it. Uh, we talked then again about the five Ps of sustainable development goals. Uh, Mr. Raj mentioned it, people. Huh? People are important. Uh, uh, we are determined to... Um, uh, so these are the goals. One, two, three, four, and five are really people development goals, SDGs. Huh? Then we have planet... Uh, and planet here, you have goal 6, 12, 13, 14, 15. Um, 12 is responsible consumption and production. 13 is um, climate action. 14 is life below water. And 15, life on land. Huh? A prosperity, okay, so this is where you have 8, 9, 10, uh, decent work and economic growth. 9, industry, infrastructure, uh, 10 and 11. Peace. I think this is just SDG 16. Without peace, nothing can be achieved. So you can see now what is happening in the world at the moment of the war. And I think it has affected uh, the way and the dates we are going to reach our goals for Agenda 2030. Yeah? And finally, partnerships. Now, this is really interesting and important. And, uh, uh, and infrastructure here, internet connectivity. I have actually, this last two years, made so many partnerships online uh, and working with people on these goals, okay? Like I am now with the um, Global Youth Forum based out of Kenya, and we are empowering people in, in Kenya and the rest of uh, Africa, and we're learning from this, them as well. Huh? So partnerships are important. Now in Malaysia, uh, the implementation of Agenda 2030 is through the economic planning unit of the Prime Minister's, uh, in the Prime Minister's department. Huh? So the the National Sustainable Development Goal Council, SDG Council, is chaired by the Prime Minister, and uh, the steering committee is chaired by the uh, uh, Director General of EPU, the Economic Planning Unit. So, and then we have five basically um, working committees. A working committee one is inclusivity. So, inclusivity, you have things like goal number one, no poverty, zero hunger, gender equality, and reduce inequality. Committee, working committee two is well being. Huh? So working committee three is human capital, where quality education is, is under that. And then environmental and natural resources, you can see there. Uh, and finally, the fifth working committee is for economic growth. So these are the uh, basic structure, and it's uh, Mampu, uh, so yeah, our EPU is in charge of it, okay, under the Prime Minister's Department. And they work with members from the UN agencies, private sector, NGOs, and, and so forth. So all of us can get involved. Okay, now let's come to some key issues. I think this is what uh, Agenda 2030 is all about, trying to help us make this a better planet. And you can see climate change, global warming. We have deforestation, overconsumption, but food waste, clean water availability, you know, not to... That could actually start a world war. So many said that, that the shortage of water is, may cause a world war. And in fact, uh, planet Earth, I, someone told me that just only 3% of the water is drinkable and, and clean. You know? So things like this, as the population of the world grows, can we meet the needs? Huh? And things like uh, you know, work, worker abuse and human trafficking as well. If you look at it, population demographic issues, now, if you look at the demographic issues, populations, so and Malaysia has got a relatively young population, uh, but Japan's population, not many children they've had this last 30 years. And they actually say that Japan will need to more than quadruple its foreign workforce to 6.7 million people to maintain its current 
levels of economic output. So, you know, they don't have enough people. They either get foreign labor, already they, they're going to say it's going to four times, or robots. You know, I see many uh, robots being used there, especially for elderly care as well. And another point is clean water availability. Agriculture is the biggest use of water worldwide. And uh, it's close to 70% of all fresh water for human use. And I tell you, this is where it ties up with something else. There's a big, big impact agriculture can play, and I'll, and I'll tell you, okay? So coming to uh, human trafficking and, and SDG 8, decent work and economic growth. Now, this is very, very current. The FIFA Football World Cup is going to start, okay, very shortly. And, uh, and, and at the right time, lots of uh, movies have come out, uh, documentaries, about the, all the abuses that have gone on. Huh? So you can see here that a man is working for less than one US dollar per day and building things and, and then he gets, uh, uh, doesn't give uh, all the best working condition, lives in squalid conditions, sometimes gets uh, into accidents and actually dies. And they get less than one US dollar a day. But the people who are hosting the World Cup, they get so much revenue in return. And so this is where you know, decent work and economic growth comes in. We need to provide them with enough good conditions and then reduce inequalities. The inequality has got to be reduced. People speak about the Gini coefficient huh? and strong institutions. Only when we have strong institutions, then there'll be, you know, um, business leaders and political leaders cannot get away with um, taking away things from the, the uh, underprivileged or the lower levels. Overconsumption, I just want to speak about that. Now, this is a massive, massive concern, and SDG 12 speaks about responsible consumption and production. Now, this is where, if you look at it, um, if I earn $100,000 per year, and if I spend it all by 30th of June, what happens? I've got no more money for the next six months, right? And so this is what is called, I have to borrow it from the future to pay back. So, on that basis, my salary overshoot day is 30th June, whereas it should be 31st December. Because rightly, you live your life in such a way that your salary stretches. In fact, if it goes to further, then you can actually have savings. Huh? So likewise, similarly, um, in, actually 31st December is no overshoot. Huh? So we have something called Earth Overshoot Day. I don't know how many of you have heard about Earth Overshoot Day. Earth Overshoot Day marks the date when humanity's demand for ecological resources and services in that given year exceed what Earth can generate in that year. So just like our income, it's saying now that we are taking so much so that our consumption day, or what do you call it, the Earth Overshoot Day, is coming faster and faster. So we actually, in fact, I'll show you in the next slide, sir. It's actually a calculation that can be done and uh, something called the Global Footprint Network. You can actually go in and do your calculation for yourself. Huh? So you calculate it by, on the supply side, what's the nation's bio capacity? Okay, if you've got a lot of land, nice fertile land, trees, you regenerate, okay? And uh, your oceans, you've got nice uh, clean water, the fish, everything thrives, then you can provide more, your bio capacity is more. And on the consumption side, the demand side, it's all about consuming. If we consume less, wow, we are then, you know, we save more, right? And the future generation has a better chance to, to survive and uh, enjoy planet Earth as well. Huh? So they actually see it as the global hectares. Huh? The Earth Overshoot Day fell on July 28th this year. So you can see, you know, five months to go, four months to go, we already are borrowing from the future. So that's why it's important. And if you look at this year, um, we are consuming resources so fast that we are using them and we're taking it from the future generation. And 60% of the ecological footprint is carbon. Carbon, and most of the carbon comes from fossil fuels and livestock consumption. Because the livestock, they, 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 they take this as well from the, the food we eat and, and issue carbon. Huh? So if you look at this Earth Overshoot Day, the trend over the years, huh? uh, 
uh, from when they kept 1971 Earth Overshoot Day was like uh, actually the year before or December okay, 20th. That means we had only a few days. But as you saw, it came earlier and earlier and earlier. It's coming to July, and this is where we are now, July 28th. That means by July 28th, we're running out of, of resources. Huh? And if you look here, there is one blip here that goes high. That means we were good in 2020. So we actually, the uh, day was, about, I think, August 28th. So we improved that one year in 2020. And why? Because most of us were in lockdown and we didn't use so much resources. There's less traveling, there's less air travel and whatnot. Huh? So, and every country has got overshoot day as well. I've got 15 minutes. Uh, uh, Mr. Raj, just let me know how much time I have so I can kind of go through. Uh, and uh, just look at this link here. Now, countries overshoot days. Huh? Now, this is interesting because uh, if you look at the overshoot days of different countries, what day? Of, okay, so Afghanistan has no overshoot day. That means they, they consume very little. Okay, Angola as well. Uh, Argentina, in June, by June, they have already reached their overshoot day because they consume a lot of resources and they don't have uh, the capacity to do that. Actually, the supply side is one planet. We are getting it all from that one planet. But the demand side is different people doing different things. And if you go down here to, to let's see, Malaysia, I just want to show you, like, China here is, like, June June 2nd was the uh, overshoot day. So by June, the remainder six uh, they have. And then going down the list here, they were the largest country in the world in population terms. And second largest country is actually, um, if you just look at this list, uh, I just want to show you here. India. So India has no overshoot day. That means they consume less resources compared to the, the uh, availability. And one big reason is because many and many of them are vegetarians, okay? And they got uh, maybe uh, the rural areas, they do not consume, they do not travel so much, so they do not. Malaysia, as I said, I think, okay, July 28th was the World Overshoot Day. How about Malaysia's, let's look at it. Malaysia's Overshoot Day, now, just like US, uh, if you go down, um, are we higher than Malaysia was actually, there you go, May. That means, wow, we, we are even worse than the average uh, uh, global. Uh, the global average was um, July, but we are in, in uh, May. So it, it, is, it is a concern. Hi everyone, uh, we lost connection with him again. Uh, I think he's attempting to get back in the lost uh, connection. Uh, just hold on for a while, please. Uh, we should be having a uh, shift up again and uh, he has another sort of uh, less than 10 minutes. And we will quickly go into the Q&A uh, before we end the talk for today. So uh, just hold on for a while, please. He should be on board again soon. Yes, Chief, you're all right. You're back again. Yeah, I'm back. Apologies for that. I, yeah. I have a second screen, so I kind of know when I'm <laughs> out, okay? Okay, right. so uh, we have a, uh -huh. about, about five more minutes to go. So Okay, right. I hope it's so, enough for you. Yeah, I think, uh, let's see, uh, eight minutes yeah. maybe. Or can I, I'll just share yeah. my screen. Okay, I, I know five minutes. Okay, you can just put yeah, eight, eight minutes is fine. No issue. Okay, right. Am I uh, live again or my, my presentation? Yes, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes. Okay, let's get my presentation back on. Okay, once again, my apologies. Uh, and let's get back to that slide. 
Okay, this gives me as well. So we spoke about Earth Overshoot Day, and I'll just come to finally right. Rachel Carson. I'm going to skip that and just come to some key dates. So if you look at it, some of the key dates there, the Paris Agreement, uh, December 2015. Uh, then we have things like the Rio Agenda. And now let me come then to the activities that I do with Giants versus Titans. Huh? So it's, like I mentioned, it's about gamification and we use games to raise awareness. So our agenda and the gamification the, is to uh, community agenda. And we want to, our objective is to raise awareness on planet Earth's uh, problems, things, okay? If you look at SDS Target 8 and Target 13, uh, they are about raising awareness. Huh? SDG uh, uh, 12, um, responsible consumption and uh, production, they speak about the need to raise awareness. Huh? Now, this, this picture here that I'm showing you, this was just yesterday, I had blanked out his face and asked him a question, you know, uh, which is the correct answer? He said 15. So the awareness is really lacking. Huh? The, the correct answer is, of course, 17. And this is some of the activities that we did. This is at an education fair in Pataling Jaya, speaking about and running quiz games. And, and they enjoy it because we're using games. Huh? And this was three days ago again. Uh, you can see um, Orbix, so we, we tied up them. And uh, the question here is really an environment-based question. And again, this one here, just last month, we had questions and answers. And we had entrepreneurs as well getting involved. Huh? And now, let's see if I can just share. Can you follow to my camera? Can you can you as well. So now let's come. If you look at this, this is on the table, uh, there we go. The drone takes off. Can you see that? It's 3D. Okay, let's come down. Let's be back. Let's be forward. Okay, let's move forward. Let's come down and go to this young man. Let's see whether we can take a photo of him. Okay. And I think I'm going to set a little bit of photo. Let's come to the left and right. Okay, so you can see there how excited the young man is, you know, and this is called gamification. And also, if you look at it, this is SDG number nine, innovation, SDG number four, education. So we want to get young children excited. So that we, we actually showed them the coding, how to make it go left, right, center, controlling the donors. So this way, children be interested so they can raise their themselves out of poverty as well. Huh? And this is something we did. Uh, uh, last year september and that that is a site actually awareness and and we did this online and globally so we have people from all over player yeah? geolocation challenges uh this this is a farm project that we actually started uh in in kl if you look at it the, this is a, a in old clang road and and this one supports the sdgs and we actually empowering youngsters so these are youngsters from um uh, who are not so well to do they graduated in in, in agriculture but now we got together and we gave them a piece of land and they can actually produce a lot of crops and food. Eh? Bangsa green spurs and these were things we were doing uh, much, much earlier. Eh? So this was uh, way back uh, about 25 years ago to raise awareness. And finally, let me just uh, come back to, again, Raspberry Pi microcontroller. We use this and we can empower them to say that children, we should. Be, this is what we should be doing. We should be getting them excited about the future. The future is digital. Okay, and we can use this to make this a better planet. So this is what uh, Giants versus Titans is trying to do. Huh? So get to know your targets. If you go to uh, this particular site, this is uh, Giants versus Titans we have created. You can actually do keyword searches as well. Huh? And um, so we have actually done a couple of things like Agenda 2030 Awareness at the FIFA World Cup, gamifying uh, uh, like a memory game as well. Uh, later, if we have time, I can show it to you. Huh? So bottom line is you can go to Giants vs. Titans, you log in there and you can create your own avatar and you take part in challenges online as well. Huh? Okay, so coming to the end, uh, a look ahead. Can we actually achieve uh, our targets? Uh, actually, it's looking quite bleak. If you look at the report in July 2022, about five months ago, um, uh, our uh, UN thinks that we are at... Um, 
in great danger. We need to do more to make sure that we get ourselves out of this. And as a globe, we pull ourselves out to a better place. Huh? You can see here, he said, we must rise higher to rescue the sustainable development goals or else it's 2030 is looking uh, un unfeasible. Huh? And we've got to stay through to it. So more needs to be done. And that's what we are trying to do, working with people to gamify it and make this a better planet. And hopefully those of you who are here watching it, uh, if you can all come on and, and want to do things together, more than happy to do it. Huh? With that, okay, I'm going to finish off with the final three questions. If you've got your keypads ready, let's have our final three questions and have our scoreboard. We have time for that, I hope. Yeah, I'm sure we do. Okay, let's have our final three questions. All of you who logged in, I still hope you have your keypad. Go on and press A, B, C, or D. And uh, we will, okay, there we go. On your keypad. Some of you may have left him. Uh, all right, Orion, you're still there. The rest of you, let's see. I'll do a final three questions and then we'll show the scoreboard. Okay, we've got two of you. If I get five of you, I will do three more questions. Yeah, we've got four of you there. SVP just signed in, is it? One, two, three, four. Okay, I believe we have enough of you. Let's have question number six, seven, and eight. We've got a total of eight questions for this round. Good luck. Here is your first question for the final stretch. And your question is as follows. Sustainable Development Goal 1 of Agenda 2030 has an aim. What does it aim to do? Okay, your choices. A, make planet Earth hotter. B, ensure decent work and economic growth. C, cut more and more trees every year. Or D, eliminate poverty on planet Earth. The countdown has started. Thank you for still being with us. Apologies that we, are, we had a couple of uh, snags. Right, and time's up. You have 10 responses. And let's see what you guys have gone for. Okay, no one went to cut more and more trees. Make planet Earth hotter. Okay, that's interesting. Right. The answer we're looking for, SDG number one is basically says no poverty. Uh, SDG one is no poverty. SDG eight was about decent work and um, economic growth. There we go. More than 700 million people still live in extreme poverty. They're surviving on less than US 190 a day. I come to our final question. Okay, in the interest of time, let's see this question. When was Earth Overshoot Day this year? When was Earth Overshoot Day this year? And your clock starts. 2022. Were you listening in? The rest of you, you need to use a mobile device here. I see some of you are putting in. Seven responses in. And with that, I close the countdown. And let's see your responses. 88% going for July 28th. I hope that's the correct answer. I hope that's the correct answer. It means I've done my part well. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, 12%. So you can see Earth Overshoot Day and what it's all about. And Raj, one final question, Mr. Raj, it's okay with you. And then I'll show you the scoreboard. Again, there's further information there. And our final question. Agenda 2030, which of the 17 sustainable development goals aims at doing more and better with less? You can easily get eight points here if you look at the choices of a 15 8 4 scoring system. Huh? You go for two choices, you can get eight points. What are you going to go for? And I start the countdown clock. This is our final question, and then I'll show the scoreboard. And then I believe I'm ready to. Okay. And time's up. And let's see what you guys have gone for. 69% going with SDG 12 and 25% going with SDG 8. There's no SDG 43, okay? There's seven, 17 sustainable goals. And we're looking at responsible consumption and production. That's a very important thing. And remember, the more we 
the less we consume, the better for planet Earth. And with that, let's see our final scoreboard. Who is our champion? As we go in 15th place, we have going up the list. And our top 12 is free. Ribbon, 8th place, I'm tired. Jasprit there in 7th place. 5th place, Joy, 79 points. Erkin, 4th place. Hector, 90 points. WY, 94 points. And our champion giving up of 98 points to Orion. Congratulations, Orion. You are our champion today. So with that, I uh, finish my gamification for a better planet of Earth on an online quiz here. And I think with that, uh, Raj, I'd say thank you. And uh, I'm happy to uh, pass the microphone back to you. And if there are any questions, uh, I'm happy to take them. OK, um, thank you very much, Shiva. It was a very uh, interesting combination of uh, knowledge and gamification put together thank you so much for that uh, i'm just checking through uh, some questions which was posted uh, on the registration as well um i think let me uh yeah let me get this uh question on board yeah now um that's a question on technologies involved in sustainability informatics i think um perhaps the way i read this question is perhaps one want to understand what kind of technologies are there whenever we want to promote uh sustainability uh you know initiative and all so perhaps you would like to share some of the technologies you have used in promoting uh technology informatics or data analytics and stuff like that okay Thank you. Appreciate that question. Um, and let me answer it by saying that I'm a chemical engineer by profession. As in my introduction, you said, you know, I'm very much, uh, I picked up coding as, as a, a passion, as a hobby. And so I'm not sure if I'm the right person to answer that. Having said that, you know, some of the tools I've used to build uh, are things like JavaScript, uh, uh, PHP, MySQL, and whatnot. So you use that Visual Basic and we put them all together. Lately, I've gone into you know things like C sharp as well, and uh, you know PyCharm, so coding, and you use that to you can help coding for drones. You know, the key thing to say here to everybody out there, to youngsters, is it's now really easy if you are passionate about something. There's something called Google, there's something called YouTube. My, you can just get so much information and learn from there. So uh, basically, that's my answer. These are the te technical uh, tools that I've used. And sky is the limit with what you can build. Stay ahead on, on trends. Keep Googling and learning, it, you know, new things coming up all the time. No? Right, right. Okay, thank you for that uh, thoughts of yours. I have another one. Um, are there any latest trends in gamification? If there are any, what are they from your point of view or your thought? Okay, that's interesting. Uh, um, the, the main trend is the people saying that gamification is overused. Uh, let me put it this way, it's not a trend. Huh? Uh, to answer your question, game, there are two different things. Now, games as in, you know, games you play like uh, FIFA soccer where the objective is to win and people get engaged as a game. That's not the, the gamification games. We're talking about gamification for non-game agendas. Huh? In that regard, um, um, I don't see any outstanding or extraordinary uh, trend coming. But the main uh, thing that I've read about is criticism for gamification as a tool. There are many people who say, okay, it's gamification, but you know, it's maybe it's too overused. It's all fun and games and, and nothing is achieved, you know. But I would say it's that's because perhaps the designer of, of the game for that particular non-game uh, agenda it wasn't done right. In my view, gamification can still be used to achieve, um, you know, community agendas, team building agendas, um, education agendas, uh, and motivating and empowering people. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there's another interesting question um, coming from the registration as well. Uh, how do we move forward with disabled friendly ICT? Uh, I, I believe. Here, they're more talking about 
uh, how can technology help uh, you know where one is a disabled friendly uh, person uh, you know how technology can be friendly enough for uh, a group of people who are disabled from that perspective any thoughts on that yeah of course there are, uh, there are thoughts uh, enough and this is coming from a non-expert uh, part because that's not my yeah. forte but we have learned enough i think you and i may, may have known that there are things technology is evolving so well uh, you know even your thoughts there was one a video i saw of a monkey that they've trained to you know uh, they, they had a, a tube going in of uh, liquid banana and on the screen the, the the monkey was actually using a mouse to move click on the, the box more comes in and he's just sucking and he's playing you know so that was one technology but they've moved further than just using the keyboard they actually the mouse the, the monkey is actually controlling with its brain so for, the, there is uh, neural sensors and all that they call it even with your eye people say people who are paralyzed as well you know they won't they'll be able to, to move again so um, uh, i'm not in the area but the internet of things and, and whatnot that they say actuators things to move stuff and all that and the, and the sensors uh, so these things will without a doubt contribute to to make it really uh, disabled friendly uh, in the coming future mm -hmm. But again, I got to say I'm not uh, an expert in this area sure. of technology. Yeah. Okay. Sure, we understand that. Uh, I think yeah. it's more of getting your thoughts on this uh, specific area. Okay, thank you. That's another yeah. one. Um, I think this is coming from the registration as well. Um, which was the biggest achievement or success you had in using your gamification quiz platform? Okay. You know, in your years of and yeah. developing these tools. Thank you. That's an interesting question because, you know, at times I get people saying, hey, that guy's in games. What games is this? You know what I mean? So it, yeah. there have been times it's deflating, it's demotivating. Mm -hmm. But there are other set, about 20% who see this as amazing. They come back and say, this is amazing what you did for us, etc. And also I, I've had many different scenarios. I've got clients calling me back for, for, for uh, corporate events. Um, uh, but things like the, the, the Mighty Minds Quiz Challenge, which was done with the start sponsored by RHB, it was an education uh, uh, thing to get children to speak in English more and that questions were in English. I was getting when parents were coming and telling us, wow, this year my son didn't get well, but next year he'll be back. Next year he'll inform you know, he's looking forward to it. And they would thank us for it, you know, so they, because they really enjoyed the parents enjoyed it. The parents see the benefit the children are getting. So that was really uh, uh, exhilarating, good to know, and empowering for the entire team of this. We went on for seven years from 2009 to 2015, the Mighty Mind Challenge. But Raj, to be honest, every day it, it, it gets very interesting. And, and even yesterday we had a, a yeah. quiz, up quiz, and then something's coming up in the weekend. So it's, it's like in gamification is exciting. And I'm really looking forward to younger people who are interested to come join us and, and take over as well. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I have another one um, coming from Jacqueline. Okay, how well, her question is, how well and how quickly do you think Malaysia will assimilate gamification specifically to address sustainability issues? Thanks, Jack, think, for the question. Yeah, I think the question is also appearing on the screen. Yes, yes, I, I have it there as well. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, without doubt, uh, I think the key factor is, it, is um, you know, of course, you see infrastructure as DG number nine. And thankfully, we are, uh, in terms of uh, broadband availability and whatnot, we are already there, you know. So uh, perhaps we could be cheaper compared to the rest of the region. So that is one factor. But without doubt, the key factor, especially in regard to sustainability issues, will be the political leadership. Political leadership has got to promote it, you know, but political leadership, end of the day, are elected by the people. So um, it, it's, it has got to be uh, a case where the more and more the masses have got to be made aware of this and then they will start demanding you need to, to, you know, to have more of this. And then the political leaders will listen to that as well, you know. So in terms of, of Malaysia specifically, um, uh, I, I would see us. Um, at the moment to be relatively behind uh, maybe some of our neighbors uh, because it looks like at the moment they're more interested in, in, in you know, bread and butter issues. They're not thinking about, you know, how the bread and butter comes in and is it going to be sustainable long enough? 
That's what we need to do. We need to make them think about the future and whatnot. But most of the politicians, I think, are not thinking that way at the moment, unfortunately. Right, right. I think um, from my perspective as well, in relationship to Jacqueline's uh, question, how fast can we adopt? You see, like, for example, APU is very much into, uh, you know, uh, technology, engineering and things like that. Perhaps our own student itself can focus on these areas and, you know, speed up the initiatives on gamification, which will help towards sustainability issues and things like that. Possibly our students could also take a lead on that as well. This is my thought anyway. Uh, yeah. Okay, I have another one from Dr. Stephen Poon. Um, how is gamification different from game-based learning? Okay. Interesting question from Dr. Poon. But before I, I step into his question, what you just said about your students being involved as well, uh, I really look forward. I, you know, I have come and yeah. uh, to your visit to your university and whatnot. I'll be happy to to you know sort of work with students uh, in the relevant departments uh, right. in, in gaming and gamification and whatnot, and, and do it. Sure. Uh. So now uh, coming to Dr. Stephen Poon's question, uh, Doctor, uh, you you uh, in a sense got me uh, uh, from ups as well. My answer is is uh, actually game based learning is a subset of uh, gamification because. Uh, learning is, is is basically an agenda or a or an outcome that you want. There'll be other outcomes, like for example, uh, meeting sales targets. Other outcomes such as um, you know sort of improving um, your skill level and knowledge level. Huh? So I would say that game-based learning is is actually um, a subset of, of of gamification. It is one of the areas for for gamification. Huh? So it's um, Game-based learning is part of gamification, but gamification is not necessarily part of game-based learning. That would be my response. Huh? Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm just scanning through to see any other question being posted. Uh, I think that's about it, uh, Shiv. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, we come to the end of our Q&A session, Shiv. Um, I think uh, just to add on uh, for everyone's information, and I'm sure Shif will agree on this. Um, I had the pleasure of attending a particular function where Shif was a quiz master in the event. And I think I like that concept. The proof is in the pudding, right? Only when you experience this gamification in an uh, event of, you know, where you have all kind of people, the young and the old, will you experience the excitement which goes with it in addition to knowledge enhancement and things like that. So I think the point of uh, motivation coming in, uh, pulling the crowd's interest in understanding a particular knowledge, I think this gamification really helps if it's designed and implemented in the right way. So uh, yeah, I appreciated that session, uh, Shif. I remember you were our quiz master in one of the functions we had. Uh, thank yes. you very much for that. Yeah. As you okay. See, you, Sorry. We all had we all have fun and and i think we empowered everybody there as well it was good yeah time. yeah i i think the young and the old got together you know yeah. in a common team and really played the game well, quite well actually the interaction mm -hmm. okay wonderful okay I've i think one, uh, I've got one question on the private chat shall i just uh, uh, address it yes sure if you can say one. yeah the question hello sir i was wondering if gamification would be a little convenient for us can you give me some examples, sir? Uh, the bottom line is, uh, of, is it would be convenient uh, because the game okay, is convenient only if the, the game designer has made it such such a way. Uh. So the best games, if they're designed in such a way, then it, it is convenient um, uh, because it, it becomes part of your every every day. It's it's a game designer that's important and it, it will be important. So things like uh, this quiz that, for example, that we had. Um, now, if you had a handphone, you would have been able to answer the question quickly and whatnot, you know. So you have to design accordingly. Yeah? So I had to, you know, tell you guys earlier the onboarding and much not instructions. Now, if you're doing a game in a classroom with many people, you need the chairs and all that. It's just about pulling up the chairs. It's important if you need certain props. So the props are there, then it's convenient. Huh? So, but by and large, I think gamification uh, is it's an underrated tool. As, as much as you have criticism for it, uh, I believe if the, the designer of the game is right, uh, you can achieve any agendas that you want to. Right. 
Okay, thank you. I think we can go for one last question posted by Dr. Stephen again. Uh, his question is, are there any frameworks or taxonomies that we can use to understand game design in the learning context? Oh, okay. Now, that is uh, honestly um, out of my depth, uh, I'll be honest, because as much as I, I have you know, got a, a gamification certification as well, uh, the bottom line is the answer would be yes. You know, you, you've got to check it up. But I, I honestly can't speak too much on that. Um, uh, I just get, you know, it, it, it's a fantastic area and you can design. It comes with experience. You, you sense what's going on and, and you do it. Huh? I do, do scan online channels uh, for things that are happening. But by and large, uh, where I'm at, uh, I think I've told you before, Raj, when I've with you as well. I'm kind of overwhelmed with all the possibilities, including drone coding, and, and then you have the uh, things like the Raspberry, the Raspberry Pi and all that. So uh, things like taxonomy of it and all, I, I honestly, Dr. Poon, I apologize. I don't go get in, in more area. I am now looking to collaborate with people so that you know we can deliver uh, agendas that uh, people want, and especially for a better planet. And Agenda 2030 is the perfect uh, blueprint to, to achieve a better planet. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Shiv. Thank you. Thank you for all your questions, everyone. Uh, I think we just have the right time now to wrap up our session for today. Uh, I think what we have just experienced with uh, Shiv giving a lecture on, <clears throat> on the uh, Agenda 2030, uh, gamification for the better planner was excellent. He combined uh, some knowledge for us to understand VR gamification itself. We were literally playing the game during this lecture session. That was interesting, I, I find. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Shiva, uh, for your sp time spent with us. Thank you so much. I would like to also thank my colleagues who are, two of them are at backstage actually. Uh, Mr. Jerry, who is our technical person who put this whole setup, StreamYard, transmitting to APUs, uh, Facebook, and, uh, and YouTube as well. Thank you so much, Jerry. And also, Dr. Ravindra, who is helping us at the virtual backstage as well. Actually, he's sitting right in front of me, but for you guys, he's in our virtual backstage. Uh, he's the one coordinating all the questions coming from our social media as well. Thank you very much, uh, Ravindra. And also, I would like to thank our head of ISOC Research Center, Dr. Stephen, for continuously giving us the support and encouragement. Um, so once again, uh, Shiva, thank you so much for being our guest speaker for today's lecture. It was very enlightening, fun, and innovative, I must say. I think it has opened up many of our minds to explore further in gamification and contribution towards a better planet. And most importantly, to all the participants, who are with us playing the games. Thank you so much for being with us. And I am Vijay Raj signing off. I will see you when I see you next. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shiva. Thanks and bye-bye. Yeah, uh, hand over to Jerry. Thank you so much, Shiva. Thank you, everyone.